everyone, welcome to Pour Painting with Ron. In today's video, we're going to be doing a swipe. If you like what you see today, please press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please take a moment to subscribe. Thanks. So you may be wondering what a swipe is. Well, basically, a swipe is the method of layering some paints on your canvas and then using an implement of some description to wipe another colour across the top to create your painting. As you can imagine, there are hundreds of ways of doing this to create different looking paintings. And today you're just going to see one of them. But hopefully you will be inspired to have a go yourself to create something interesting. Now, the canvas I'm using today is a uh, 50 centimeter by 40 centimeter thin edge canvas. I've made sure it's nice and tight and I've prepared the back by taping a bit of painter's tape around the edges and hammering in some decent sized push pins so it make it easy picking it up and drying it afterwards so it doesn't stick to anything. Now to work out how much paint I needed for this size canvas um, I would normally use the formula I've shared with you in previous videos and that is multiplying the length of your canvas by the height of your canvas and then dividing your answer by 2.5. Doing that to this size canvas gives me an answer of 800 grams of mixed paints. Now I would use that amount if I was doing a technique like a flip cut pour but a swipe uses considerably less paint than that. So I'm only going to mix between 500 and 600 grams of paint today for this painting. And even then it may be too much. Now, the colors I'm going to use today are a little different to what I usually use. Usually for my base coat, I use white or black, but I thought I'd try something different today by using orange. Now, I think this orange is a little bit light, so I've mixed a little bit of red as well. These are Montmartre colours. Then, on top of my base coat, I'm going to layer some Extreme Sheen Deco Art paints. Now, these create really excellent lacing effects in this technique, as you'll see. I love using them. I'm using 24 karat gold and copper. Then my swipe colour over the top is going to be Montmartre Black. Now the pouring medium I prefer to use for this sort of technique is Floetrol because it gives me the better looking cells, uh, not cells, better looking lacing that I'm after today. The glue and water mix doesn't really do that that well. There's even no need to use um, silicon today, no silicon at all. In this painting, just flow troll and the uh, extreme sheen paints will give me the effects that I'm after today. Now, if I was doing a flip cut pour, I would most likely use a one to one ratio of paint and pouring medium to give me that the thick honey consistency that I'd be after. But a swipe uses much thinner paint. So for my mix today, I've mixed um, one part paint to one and a half parts flow troll, give or take a little bit, and a bit of water to give me the consistency that I want. Um, for the metallics, however, I've kept the ratio as one to one um, because I like to keep those reasonably thick still. Okay, so let's get to it. So. These are my paints. As you can see, I've mixed up quite a lot of my orange red color to cover my base. Probably more than I need, but I don't like running out. My black swipe color and my two extreme sheen paints. Now that this paint, I used about oh, 40 grams of red and about 160 grams of orange. And then I added about 250 grams of Floetrol and a bit of water. Now the consistency you're after is quite a bit thinner. 
only leaves a teeny weeny little mound if I'm pouring it off the spoon and if I turn do a little twisty loop with the paint the paint only stays on the surface for about one or two seconds so really thin the black the same as well as I said no silicon of any description either now to do my swiping with later there's a lot of things that you can use I sometimes use cut playing cards or a thick bit of plastic but today I'm going to be using paper towels just plain paper towels on their own they're a little bit light so what I've done is folded them in half some of them are folded lengthwise like that to give me a long edge and some I folded the other way to give me a short edge and then I'm going to dampen them with a little bit of water I'm not going to saturate them but just make them a bit damp to make them a bit heavier so that they can drag the paint the way I like them to hopefully that will work okay let's get busy let's get my canvas now the first step is to cover my canvas with my base color so I'll go for the big cup first lovely orange color a bit darker than the original orange that bit of red just makes it look nice more I'll tip a lot of it off I'll keep a little bit just in case then I'll get my oh, where is it? Um, then I'll use my little spatula I'll just smooth it out a bit now air bubbles are not much of a problem with Floetrol as you can see there's not many there although I did mix up my paint yesterday and let it sit now there's way too much paint on the canvas I'm going to tip most of this off in a minute I need to spread it evenly over my canvas I don't want a big thick layer of paint so I'll swish it around and then I'll go to my edges and corners this gets messy nicely now you probably want to wash your hands after this because it is pretty yuck as you can see I've tipped quite a lot off and then just go around and make sure you have covered all the white bits Let's go around the back. Drip orange paint everywhere. There we go. Oh, there's some blobby bits. No, they should be fine. Now I'll just go and wash my hands and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to just quickly torch to get rid of the air bubbles and that's all I need I've got a nice smooth background happening now I'm going to put on my extreme sheen now I want to do a line of color 
across my painting. I'm going to avoid a straight line, mainly because I can never get it exactly straight and then it just looks off. So I'm just going to do a, a bit of an interesting line across my page with the gold. I'm going to do two stripes of gold, leaving space in the middle for my black. Just give it a bit of a shake. Oh, where will we start? Maybe up here. I can do it reasonably thick. Maybe like so. And then I'll do my other one. I really hope it works today. So there's my gold. And then I'm going to put some copper on there as well. I might do a, a wiggly, wiggly shape for the copper. Now, before I put the black on, I'll just prepare my swiping cloths. You don't have to be in a particular hurry. Now, I'm not going to saturate them, just dampen them a bit. So they're a little, a little heavier. And I'll do the same to my skinny ones. Could have done it before, but I'm doing it now. You don't have to be in a particular hurry with this method of painting. Okay. Now I'm doing several wiping cloths because it's not a good idea to use the same one again over this over your painting now, i've seen a bug that i have to get rid of on my painting don't want a bug sitting in there okay now the black now you don't want to put too much on otherwise it will just sit in the middle and you won't know what to do with it so i start off the outside edge pull it on now you could use a squeeze bottle if you wanted to i just get my spoon I'll just put a little bit more there and a little more there a little bit goes a long way in this technique okay now these big ones might be just a little bit too big so I might start with one of these now I just lie the edge in like that Make sure it's grabbed the paint. And I'm just going to pull it down. Now that didn't work really well. So I will do that again. That's better. get my oh, make sure that it's all covered and you drag it down hmm, might use that one again Over. 
Sonne. Now I'm going to turn my canvas around and I'll do the other side. I really like that, but I'm not fussed about the bottom. So what can we do about that? Well, if you really don't like what you've done, you can scrape off the part you didn't like. That's where the extra comes in handy and then try just that part again. So I'm just debating whether or not I will do that. Mm, I think I might. I think I might. That bit's all right, but everything else there is not. I know this looks pretty drastic. There's no point keeping something you don't like. It's not really a lot of paint in the great scheme of things. disgusting but we shall soon fix it we hope so I hope I've kept enough orange behind I think I have swipe off my palette knife Can't tip it like I did before. So I'll spread it as best as I can. Using my palette knife. Let's get rid of some. Okay. Now I lay 
lay down some gold. And then my copper. And then I will create my swapping things. Let's see how we go. Swipe that little bit again. Lay it in. Almost there. Looking better. stuck my glove in there so I'm just going to get a skinny piece skinny bit I'm gonna to have to start all the way up here again Just drag down. Okay, well that's a lot better. I'll just give it a torch.
Well, after all that messing around, it turned out really nice after all. I'll just bring you in for a closer look. Remove my gloves and we'll have a look. As you can see, the Extreme Sheen paints and the Flow Troll give really amazing lacing effects. when you use them in a swipe. I think the orange and the black, they work really well together. Again, this painting will continue to develop over the next little while and it will look amazingly sparkly when it's dry. Well, that was messy, wasn't it? But as you can see, if your painting doesn't completely work the first time through, you can normally scrape off the bit you don't like and just fix that bit. Or if the entire painting doesn't work, you can just scrape all the paint off and try again. There's a fly buzzing around. But after scraping off the bit I didn't like and just reapplying a bit of extra paint I had left over, it still worked really well. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. As I said, it'll dry nice and flat and the extreme sheen will really come into its own once it dries. Now, before I put a cover over it to let it dry, I'll go around the edges and just get rid of the extra bits that are dripping down the side, just to make it look tidy. And if there's any white bits, which amazingly there still is here, after all the messing around I've done, you can just touch them up by dabbing a bit of paint on them. Now I like using the thin edge ones for swipes because the edges often look a bit untidy when a swipe and it's not as noticeable with a thin edge as it is with a real thick edge canvas. So I tend to do all of my swipes on the, the thin edge canvases. I'm happy with that. I like to try again and maybe do it the right do it right the first time without having to scrape anything off. Perhaps the paper towels were not the best idea. I may have to go back to pieces of plastic or playing cards, bits of card next time, but we'll see. There's lot, lots of different ways of doing it. Done. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and you're as happy with my final result as I am. I was a bit worried there for a bit that I just ruined it all, but no, it came out really well. I hope you learned something and I hope that you're inspired to give a swipe a go. So until next time.